Hello Free Worlds fans, this is Sizer and Zukar here. We're here to show off some of the current balance features as well as other gameplay features for Free Worlds Tides of War. Uh, say hi, Zukar. Hello Free Worlds. So, uh, he's been with me throughout the entire process testing every little change I make and aside from maybe one or two other people knows the combat as it is now as much as anyone else. So he'll be talking about his feelings and I'll be talking about my feelings and we'll all get very touchy feely about fighter combat. So uh um, oh yeah. So we're gonna head out towards one of the spawns I have here in the system. Let me drop a bu uh a buoy. Because we have that awesome feature. Alright, talk up. He's gonna go in first because he's got a big ship that hurts. And I'm too much of a coward. Stuck in the the dock animation. Yeah, hold on a second. Yeah. Alright, so maybe I will go in first. There we go. So this is part of the hyperspace system we've implemented. Uh, this is an in-system jump buoy. Objective you might notice in about a second I get a little bit of lag stutter because right now it takes a bit to load in NPCs on the system that's running the server. Um, I'm running the game on the same box as I'm running my server that's hosting all of this, so you'll notice some frame rate lag, but that's simply because I'm running the server on the box. On the main server, it is nowhere near like that. Alright, there's core sec. There's hut. There's only hut capitals here at the moment. So it looks like we're going to be attacking core sec. Sounds fun. Torpedoes away. One minor problem, though, I don't seem to be able to get to you. Just uh, cruise over, worst case, you know. Oh god, I aggroed everyone. Whoops. Okay, so in this new combat system, uh, fighters have a lot more weight to them. Gone are the days of spinning in one position. Uh, Combat is a lot more about arcs and planning your your turns well ahead of time. Everything moves quite a bit faster. I think uh, even the slowest fighter now is twice as fast as it was in the demo, but turn speeds have gone down quite quite a lot. Uh, fighter rolls have been refined. Uh, Interceptors are there to sting. Uh, they're good for point defense and hunting down hard targets. Uh, Lee can attest to how annoying they are. Really annoying. Yeah, uh, a couple A-wings can just hover around a TIE Defender forever and explode it at will. They can also get in behind patrol boats pretty easily if the patrol boat doesn't know what they're doing. Yeah. Or even if they do in some cases. Yeah. Uh, a, a good interceptor pilot can just be unhittable. Problem with them is that if you do get hit, you die almost instantly. You you can sneeze in their general direction and they will explode. Uh, light fighters sort of follow that motif, but are a bit more hardy, and consequently a bit less agile. They're a good main combatant uh, in the right hands. The, the fighter classes, the light, medium, and heavy fighters, are by no means... Uh, none is better than the other. They're, they all have their strengths and weaknesses for different gameplay styles, but they all fill the same role of killing things. Anything they see, they want to kill. Uh, the medium fighter is sort of your multi-role, all-use all, uh, fighter. It's got enough survivability to mix it up in a large dogfight, and enough maneuverability to outturn even light fighters or interceptors in the hands of a capable pilot. Uh, 
heavy fighters are the tank of the fighter class. Uh, a TIE Defender or an E-Wing takes quite a long time to, to take down. And there go my shields, you'll notice the HUD flicker. Um, as I take hits. Uh, heavy fighters have quite a lot of firepower. Uh, the TIE Defender has an ion battery which is quite powerful. Uh, heavy fighters are actually quite uh, useful against patrol boats in their own right. Uh, patrol boats like the, the K-Wing and the Skipper Blast Boat, uh, which are sort of our heavy bombers. Bombers have interesting roles. The light bombers, uh, like the, the Y-Wing and the uh, TIE Bomber, are somewhat fragile, slow and clunky. They're kind of crappy ships, but their redeeming virtue is that they have massive bomb bays, larger than uh, their heavy bomber counterparts. So they are pretty much cheap flying arsenals. Uh, by contrast, uh, you got popped, didn't you? Yeah, I derped up and ran into someone. <laughs> nice. So, and there I go. Took a laser to the face from a Liberator. Never good for your health. Um, so yeah. Where was I? Uh, heavy bombers. Uh, light heavy, bombers. Yeah, light bombers, and, and so they're small and whatnot. Heavy bombers. They're, they're kind of similar to like World War II uh, torpedo bombers, if you think of it like that. They're, they're designed to really carry heavy weapons in the bottom. Yeah. Uh, the heavy bombers are much more armored and shielded than light bombers. They tend to actually be somewhat more maneuverable and faster uh, with better gun batteries, but they have substantially smaller cargo holds for munitions. They're sort of your fighter bomber com uh, combatant. They also have the advantage of both the B-Wing and the XG-1's uh, assault gunboat, which is the Imperial counterpart to the B-Wing, the heavy bomber. Uh, both have serious ion batteries, and those ion batteries can really, really hurt some of the mid-range uh, small ships, including patrol boats. Once they've dropped their shields, they can wreck your power supply and keep you from firing. So a couple heavy bombers diverted from their anti-shipping role by their fleet commander may not always be a waste, especially if you're up against a wing of patrol boats. And they're still maneuverable enough to keep out of the patrol boats' fire, usually. Usually. The B-Wing is really hard to hit from the side profile. Uh, then you get up to the patrol boats themselves, which are sort of little, little gunboats, sort of like the, the patrol torpedo boats of World War II. They've got heavy... Now, I'm going to let you finish, but I just want to say that Lancer Squadron is best squadron. Yeah, Lancer Squadron is best squadron. I won't argue that point. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're like the patrol torpedo boats of, of World War II. They've got uh, anti-capital punch. They've got turret capability able to rip through fighters that aren't paying attention. And they're relatively fast for their size. Downside being is that they do have a bit of a size, and so capital ships can hit them with anti-capital turbo lasers, which is not always good for their health. Some of them are particularly nasty, like the Skipper and its powerful ion batteries. Even the largest capital ships can be tapped out by them if they're not paying attention. Yep. No, it, it can get nasty. Uh, larger than that are the assault shuttle ships. Uh, you've got your escort shuttle, your ATR-6 the Gamma Assault Shuttle, you've got the the Nova Courier, the, uh, the Decimator. Uh, each one of them is a bit unique in, in many respects. Uh, I've got enough HUD fighters here to argue them, I'm going to engage. Uh, but yeah, the, the shuttles all have unique attributes. For example, uh, the Gamma ATR-6 is sort of your really nasty fleet bomber, you know, call out, you know, the flying fortresses of World War II. It's got a massive bomb bay, it can mount heavy uh, projectile weapons like bombs, rockets, and advanced torpedoes. Uh, it's got close-in turret defense, it's got a really good forward gun. 
Uh, it's fairly durable for its it, size, too. It is fairly durable for its size, and uh, it's got a, a dual heavy turbo uh, ion cannon forward weapon set. Uh, it's more akin to the AC-130, I'd say, than the old fortresses, in that you, you want to hover around the edge of, the, of combat and blast inwards. Or a modern day level bomber attacking a fleet, you know, they sort of drop missiles from outside their counter range. Yeah. But uh, so that's the ATR-6. The escort shuttle uh, has similar firepower, smaller hold. It's a bit more durable. It's faster. It's more maneuverable, and it's got an aft turbo laser battery. Uh, its forward lasers are capable of engaging fighters, but not too effectively because they're really spread out. So you get a really bad convergence, though it can be done. Uh, then you've got the New Republic dedicated shuttle, the uh, the Nova Courier which is a really cool ship. Uh, it has three uh, missile launchers as opposed to the two on the other shuttles, but it can only mount light uh, launchers such as the concussion missiles and proton torpedoes. That can make it an exceptionally deadly anti-subsystem uh, support ship. Once something's shields go down, uh, at Anovia Courier there go my shields. A, uh, a Nova Courier equipped with uh, three MG7 launchers can rip broadsides right off of light capitals because of the exceptional range of the pro standard proton torpedo. Do you have any torpedoes on you? I've got one MG7 left. I'm trying to pop this Marauder over here. I see it. It's not. It's just an MG7. I'm about to die. There it goes. That's it. I'm about to pop. I'll come back in. Yeah, I'm gonna come back in with advanced torps. Uh, so while we're talking about torps, let's quickly talk about uh, weapon rolls. Uh, so let's start with the concussion missiles. The standard concussion missile has a really good warhead, decent tracking, decent speed, uh, and you can carry quite a bit of them. It's your standard close-range dogfighting missile. It can be fired uh, during uh, a turning fight and be expected to possibly hit. Uh, no. Next up is the advanced, the advanced proton, uh, the, not the advanced proton, the no, advanced concussion. It turns better, has a smaller warhead, and you can carry fewer of them, but you're almost guaranteed to hit with them. There's very, very little you can do aside from hoping your countermeasures jam it uh, to avoid one of those. Uh, up next is the proton torpedoes. Uh, the standard proton torpedo uh, is good with anti-subsystem work. It's good with hitting fighters if you get the shot off at the right point in time, but they can be dodged. In fact, I would go so far as to say that a fighter pilot has to let an MG7 proton torp hit. Uh, or, they or be distracted. Or be, yeah, or be completely unaware of his existence. Uh, uh, further up than that is the advanced torpedo, and that's the heaviest torpedo a fighter can mount. Uh, it's not going to hit a fighter ever. It might hit a patrol boat if the patrol boat is really, really dumb. Uh, it's good for anti-freighter, anti-light capital work. It can rip right through subsystems, but you can carry far fewer of them, and they, they track nowhere near as well as the MG7 does, but they do have the same range. Uh, beyond that is the two heavy uh, projectile weapons, which are used by the bombers and the, some of the shuttles. Uh, the heavy rocket is a high, comparatively high rate of fire, high damage, unguided projectile. It's got a slight tracking to it to solve some lag issues, but it goes in and it slams hard. You can carry quite a bit of them uh, compared to the heavier one, the bomb. The bomb is absolutely devastating. It does massive amounts of damage. It has a very large explosion radius, but again, it is unguided and it is very slow by comparison. So if you're planning on hitting, like, a Lancer frigate with a bomb, you got to hope the, uh, the pilot is the dumbest person you've ever met because he will dodge it with barely any effort. Bombs can also be intercepted by uh, escorting interceptors and stuff fairly easy if they're on their game. Yep. Especially if they're mounting advanced concussion missiles. Advanced concussion missiles are actually an excellent point defense weapon in the hands of interceptor pilots because they can get on target, bear it, and lock it up within time to fire it. 
and since they're moving faster, they give an uh, an additional maybe 20% speed bonus to it. So they'll hit their targets very quickly. You just have to pray you're not shooting at an MC-30 because nothing... Nothing gets through the no, MC-30. Not much is going to get through those concussions. Yeah. Uh, the MC-30 has... Uh, has uh, concussion bomb launchers, which are exceptional point defense. That's neither here or there. So it really, for for a bomber pilot, it's really up to the bomber pilot to create a loadout that they feel is best for the target they're going with and a weapon they feel comfortable with. Because rockets and bombs and proton torpedoes have different play styles. So uh, for a lot of targets, especially frigate-sized ones, you could choose between advanced torps and rockets, and neither one of them is the better choice. It's up to you. So that's that's kind of what we were going for in this whole system is to create a system where there is no best choice. And everything I, has a role. Yeah. And I mean the closest thing that ever came to that were the patrol boats and they it's because they are supposed to be inherently powerful. So they're a bit tanky and usually take more than one person to try and kill them. But even one person can run away from them. It, it will never outright There's also, beat you. It's also the matter of cost in the later full game. It's exactly. Uh, in the full game, Shield patrol boats will cost a lot of money to maintain. I'm getting lit up by like 10 people right now. Yeah, I'm in a shuttle. I'm not even going to get into that. <laughs> Which one are you in? HR6? Yeah, I believe so. Wait, no, the escort shuttle. Oh, Sorry. did I hit? I hit with advanced torps. Boom. Boom. So, kill from the grave. I'm gonna get the Nova Core and show you what I'm talking about. This thing is so much fun. I got two Corellian Corvettes over here if you want to blow them up. Hold them down, I'm gonna come in with, uh... Are you in an ATR-6? I forget what you said you were in. Escort shuttle. Escort shuttle. Alright, I'm gonna come in with an ATR-6 and rockets, and I'm gonna end them. Just keep them locked down. The shuttles maneuverability wise are pretty slow, but for their size they do pretty well. I think it takes an ATR-6 like 11 seconds to do a full 360. They're fairly good middle ground between corvettes and fighters. Yeah. Alright, I've got 18 heavy rockets. Coming in towards you. Scanning cargo. Suggest you target the tyrant. Roger. So we've also changed the way capital shielding works. Uh, they used to be fairly rechargey. I've made them uh, more passive, if with larger, uh, larger shield capacity, but lower recharge rate, so that everything down to a bomber can participate in the elimination of a, of a capital ship. Before you really needed the DPS of a uh, larger ship to break the regen. Now, if even a fighter squadron can whittle away over time. All right, these rockets are probably gonna miss, but let's see what goes. Oh, that's gonna be impacts. Nope, that's gonna be misses. Those are impacts.
there's that. Vet. I will note that neither of us are dedicated bomber pilots. We are not used to doing runs. We're more used to being on the receiving end of them. Yeah, both of us are primarily capital ship pilots. Don't forget that aft turret of yours. Oh, uh, yeah. I've got one, one rocket left. Lost my shields. Starting to take tons of hits, and I think I aggroed all the huts. I did. Yeah, it looks like it. I want that kill. <sighs> Damn. And now they're gonna steal the kill from me. I right. blew it up my turbos. So I'm gonna grab the Nova Courier real quick and go in and. Slaughter some fighters. Have you ever tried the Nova Courier Lee? I have not. It's a lot of fun. Uh, its complete. turret range is for crap, but it's got three launchers really well placed, and when you're in cockpit mode, it looks really cool. So I'm gonna load out three MG7s Mounted. and load up on a full load of 54 proton Loaded torpedoes. Let me say that again for God. 54 proton torpedoes. Now, that's going to do a decent amount of damage against capital shields if I was able to put all of them out, but they're not designed for flattening capital shields. They're designed for taking out capital subsystems and nuking fighters that aren't paying attention. They're good use against uh, freighters, too. I think after this, we're gonna grab some capitals and go in the other direction. There's a uh, Imperial New Republic fleet spawn south of there. Go mix it up with some MC-80s. Uh, if you've been paying attention to my HUD, you might notice that there's been a lot of new icons and targeting styles. Uh, along with the new HUD design, uh, I that uh, cheese on toast created. I've been working on some buttons and miscellaneous things in my off time. Ooh, there's a crate here. I'm gonna kill it. The crate is the hut uh, patrol boat. Shield Did not mean to do that. Whoops. I keep doing that. I keep aggroing everyone. And I'm about to pop. I popped. That was funny. It's because the proton torpedo has a fairly large explosion radius, so I keep hitting NPCs that are chasing the NPC I nuke. I have to say, the match speed button is really nice. Yeah, it's it really makes your job a lot easier when you're doing uh, uh, formation flying, uh, trying to get up close and hold position on a target you want to lay into real hard. You don't have to worry about them playing uh, velocity games with you. Scanning cargo. The Nova Courier just looks good too. It's one of the few design, like original designs from Galaxies that I found decent. What faction is it? New Republic. Ah. It's it's our dedicated uh, shuttle. Ooh, 
There's that Carillion Cruiser in there. I love, love that ship. They engage in you? What do they get? Oh, there's a hut here still. Ripple, Ripple Salvoed uh, Proton Torpedoes out of the Nova Courier is really fun. What's your primary, Lee? I'm engaging the uh, Corellian Corvette Invincible. Invincible? Is that a uh, Corsac ship? Yeah. And there I go. All right. Capital ships? Capital ships. Capital ships. All right. So, uh, you feeling cruisers? What are you feeling? Hmm. Victories? Yeah, let's do victories. It's uh, the beam code's IN underscore cruisers underscore base. Victories. So as I mentioned earlier, capitals have really changed uh, in the way that they fight. They're a lot more sluggy now. Uh, we've implemented a weapon fire stagger system. Uh, it's automatic. There's no need to create weapon groups for capital ships any longer. Into wow, I forgot uh, that the ammunition size changed for the assault concussion missile ammo. I need to fix that because I can carry 810 of them. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be a right nasty surprise for any uh, Republic fleet that engaged. Yeah. Well, the thing is that it's just, it's so many that you simply would not survive long enough to fire them all. Alright, we've managed to clear each other. Alright, I'm going to beam myself to the uh, NR fighter space. You can beam yourself to the NR bomber space. Southward towards grid reference DE56. Little more five side than six. I suspect we'll be running into New Republic capital ships because it has a tendency to spawn them more often over here than Imperial capitals. 
and you'll see friendly fire's reflection maps heavily at work here where you have the ship hull with a little bit of reflectivity reflecting the uh, stars back out and his uh, dynamic shadows heavily at work here So the VSD uh, is a cruiser sized vessel, second largest class of hull in the game. Uh, unlike its New Republic counterparts, its weaponry is not really focused around the gun battery but around the missile battery. Uh, it has quite a few assault concussion missile launchers which uh, are placed like silos and they have a range of about 10 clicks. They do quite a bit of damage, in fact I believe they do the same damage as a heavy rocket does now uh, but you can carry quite a bit of them not quite as many as 810 but quite a bit of them they're very cool to watch in action too the only problem right now is that NPC spawns kind of spawn right on top of you I'll be having that change yeah. soon but uh, ideally during fight, uh, fleet combat you've got VSDs skirting into the edge of their missile range and pounding smaller ships into oblivion without any sort of return fire. That's kind of their role. They have enough gun battery firepower to take on uh, frigates and destroyers on their own uh, but they, to, to fight another cruiser they're going to need all the weapons at their disposal will be hitting including the ACMs so it's really a classic battle cruiser in that it's designed to take down everything smaller than it and run away from anything bigger. The MC-80s are a bit more versatile. Alright, we should be getting close to spawn range now. Yep, there it is. New Republic spawns in. I'm seeing fighters for the moment. Yep. We'll let Fly them wings. duke it out. Yeah. We'll let them duke it out. There we go. I'm here in capitals. There it is. Yep, I got a quasar fire. Alright. Engage the quasar fire first. I'm going to go for a... Uh, a pass. Actually, as a matter of fact, I believe. Yep. The uh, the VSD missile tubes are now broadside facing. And in spawns an MC-80. Focus fire, engaging with missiles. You like that broadside pass? Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So I'm going to try and turn and bring my other broadside to bear. I think that turn took as long as it would take for my other broadside to reload. Oh boy. MC-90 spawned in. Fantastic. Swapping missile fire onto the 90. And he's helping me. <laughs> run away, Lee! Run away! Look out, those missiles might hit you. Oh god. Oh god. <laughs> oh god, we're gonna get I really am so feeling high. my inner imperial right now. <laughs> oh, you're mean.
No, to do that though, we'd have to be upside down from each other. <laughs> Keep firing on the dagger, we might be able to pop it before we have to run. Again, you'll notice that we have the opportunity to run. Even when tractors are implemented and interdictor fields are inter implemented, we'll still have the opportunity to try and run. Uh, the only way you can die is if you're actually very well outflanked and really held down by a lot of ships keeping you locked up with tractors, or you let yourself die. You stay in a fight longer than you should, and you explode. We want capitals to be something that is, you know, ships become common knowledge, and, and uh, especially considering that we're implementing a full loss death penalty on capitals, we kind of want capitals to start gaining notoriety and feeling like you've, you've seen that ship around, it's survived the fight that you've been in with it. We want ships to gain reputation and have a, a psychological effect that a ship that's won a lot of battles has showed up on the battlefield. You'll notice that I just marked Zukar so I can keep an eye on his status. Up in the uh, left hand side of the screen. Alright. Refocus to that 90. Give her a broadside. Explosions! They are quite violent. Missiles out. Yeah, in any normal circumstance, I would probably be running right about now. Yeah. Particularly given that the MC-90 is a true battle cruiser. Yeah. It will kill you, and it will kill you shields hard. Fail. There go my shields. I'm going to try and get around and wheel my other broadside open. I don't think it's dual heavy forwards can hit me from this angle. No, it can't. It's got like a forward 45, and that's about it. Maybe a forward 60. my missiles. That is a tough son of a bitch. Make uh now I'm gonna demonstrate the power of subsystem targeting. I'm going to target a power distributor and try and take that out of the loop. Power distributors uh, assist in shield regeneration rates as well as capacitor rates. So if we can take out uh, its generators and its distributors, we can stop it from uh, firing at us. I'm going to target a power distributor and wail away at it. That's another thing assault concussion missiles are good for. There goes one of his distributors. Shield restored. That was awesome to watch. Just drops off the the subsystem markers as we both pound, I think, the same one. I was actually aiming for a turbo laser battery, it's giving me trouble. 
Alright, now I'm gonna weave back up and over it so I can bring my other battery to bear. And this is one of the things I really love about the Free World's capital combat, is that it is much more involved than just holding them the trigger on your target. Yeah, situational awareness is definitely a key. I say as I plow into the side of a frigate. <laughs> His death fuse is starting up. Yeah, I hit him with a really hard broadside. Your missile should end it. There we go. No crash, no crash, no crash. Yay, that was pretty. Alright, and while I was watching, I lost an extra 10% of hull. You should probably bugger off. I am shall die with honor. <laughs> I've got this nebula on B up my ass. I think these, uh, this interdictor and MC-30 managed to get underneath my blind spot and just were pounding away at me. Oh no, he's gonna die. Whatever shall I do? Oh, there's still an 80 here. Yeah, that's um, that's kind of how I mean. This is against NPCs, but that's kind of how fleet combat's gonna feel. It's it's big and wheeling, and I think very much on the movie's epicness scale. It's a brutal slugging match, and it's no end of fun, especially when you're playing against human fleets. You really have to coordinate all the time. Uh, it requires very, 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 very solid lines of communication between the fleet commander and his squadron. Because a well-formed fleet in this will utterly destroy an out, uh, a, sh a fleet that outnumbers and outguns you. Because it isn't about holding down the trigger on the biggest Shield target. Fail. Imperial Star Destroyers are shiny, but they're not the end all of the game. They concentrate a lot of firepower into the hands of one player, but that is just the problem. A lot of firepower goes away when it does. I'm going to start exploding very soon. Got myself in a nice little bit of crossfire. With my last breath, I spit at thee. And that's, um, that's how the game plays right now. Uh, I think it's awesome. Lee thinks it's awesome. A lot of people think it's awesome. And I think you'll think it's awesome too when we finally get around to getting this thing out the door drastically different from the demo though. So if you played the demo and you know, whatever, this is definitely going to be a different experience. Yep. It was we got a lot of feedback from the demo. 
and we agreed with a lot of it. And so I took the game, looked at some of the older games we were supposed to be based off of, and brought them more in line with that. And so far, everyone that I've shown it to has loved it. So that's what we've been doing recently. As far as on my end, I've been adding, as you've seen on ModDB, some more uh, stations to flesh out the galaxy. Friendly Fire has been working on a lot of gameplay elements and a lot of graphical uh, tweaks that needed to be implemented. So we are we are definitely not dead. We're still here. So uh, I'll see you all when I decide to do something else. Sizer out.